back to another episode. So I've been spending probably almost two or say probably an hour and a half at least um, building these scripts um, and making sure this server stuff's working. So I have got a full server system working now. This is really really cool. I'm going to try to show off to you as best as I can. We are going to maximize so that we can actually show off to you like this. I mean, it doesn't look good, but it's fine. I am actually going to update the testing environment script because I feel it's a little bit more than 0 0.1. I think it's at least now a 1. This is um, a different project, by the way, so I will go over the scripts um, this episode. I just kind of want to give you an example of what it does. So we will open up a... Um, so all I did, by the way, is that I just built it, and then I actually, because you can't run two Unity engines at once, so I just built another instance of it here. So, uh, if you are, I just had development build and script debugging, fine. I do want, I'm going to make it 64. Um, that shouldn't do barely anything, really. I'm just going to make it play 60. Yeah, so it just will make it, I think, run a bit. So, well, see, in 64, meaning it's running a bit faster. We will run it on our left monitor. And we will just kind of put it like here. And then we will run this one. So you see these two things are together. Now we can choose whichever one we want to be as a host because it's the same computer. But we are going to choose this one to be host mainly due to the fact that we got network here. But if we do make this one the host, how about we do a bit both? Yeah, we'll do a bit both. So we have three boxes here. I mean, like three options, and it is lighting and reflection probes. That's where it reflects a little bit and stuff. Just because I was mucking around, it was put quite easy to set up. So there's spawn box, host, and connect. And this is the IP, just in case if you want to change it. But right now, for me, that's fine. That's because that's my IP. Um, but it should be whatever IP your computer is. So we'll find whatever IP your computer is and use that. Um, this system is a little bit right, right now, a little bit different um, in the way that this always doesn't update so if I send a command to the server I have to actually click on the server for the server to update it the reason why is if you see here this thing isn't updating do I click it and it's just how the servers work in Unity is um, as things don't actually update until you click them right obviously old tabbing kind of thing so that is one thing I do want to just point out and that should be fine um, especially if you're running a dedicated server no problems because the server will always kind of be quotations tabbed in always be working but if you're not running a dedicated server if the client does kind of like alt tab it and people try and join I, I think there could be a problem there but I don't know well, I don't think there would be too much of a problem we'll see also if you're wondering why my FPS is capped too much I am at 15 mecha whatever uh, 15 that's a really high amount. I am running a server on this, but without running, this isn't, by the way, running the server. This is just running all the lighting yet. Yeah, lighting is expensive. But I'm sure we, I can just kind of show you without VSync on and see what you guys think. Quality, don't VSync. There we go. I'm running at now about 1,000 frames. So that's, I know we get about 3,000 frames or about like on a blank screen so it's not too bad in the fact that I've got UI and these they are quite expensive compared to the other UI because since this is the old UI system it's just a bit easier to set up things like this on the old UI system than it is on the new one because then you make canvases and all that. it's just easier to do this sometimes so we're going to do a few things we're first going to host you have nothing to change because we don't have any players connected but we can spawn boxes all we like we can do whatever we want with these boxes and there is dynamic lighting, which is why it's so much FPS, because there's so much dynamic lighting. The fact is, now we've hosted. If we go over here and we connect, as soon as we make this thing load, it will load in all the data from these servers. And these servers are identical. As you can see, things are popping up here. Things are popping up here. As you see, they're all popping around, and that that just looks pretty cool. Right? Um, I will now. Uh, there's no disconnect button, but if I quit it, it sh yeah, I, I made a disconnect thing. Because um, if you quit it when it's not actually disconnecting properly, it will crash your Unity entity. So you gotta make sure you have that um, fail safe in there, otherwise it will cause problems. So we will put this back on, and now we'll do it the other way. And we'll show you how we can make this thing. So we're still going to host with this. And we're still going to connect with this. Um, so now these connected, you can see all the data here. But if we send the spawn box, it will spawn it. 
So that means we can send commands. Obviously, as you can see, um, the only way we can actually send commands is by clicking over here because of the obviously tab in thing. And that just happens with everything. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm sure there is a way to make it dedicated, but maybe it's... Um, one thing I will, I could check right now is if we go out of here and go out of here once again. I don't want to keep closing this, by the way. <laughs> Network example first. There we go. And it didn't close at that time. I really like this new task screen. It looks really cool. If we host with this thing, and then we connect with this. Spawn boxes here. Yeah. Actually, you know, so this is definitely one thing interesting. It must be something Unity added to wires, because you see here, this wasn't happening before. Before, you had to click this, even though this is the server. So it's obviously, as you can see, a Unity editor fault that this isn't being updated. So this is not a problem in the new game, but it will be a problem if in Unity editor. So just take that in mind. If you're playtesting with Unity editor, it may be best to playtest with um, two of the scripts running than just... A unity editor, but I mean you can't do these two. Um, as you see right now, we're not actually running that much. This is running only one millisecond because it's not the server. That seems face more though. Yeah, it's only running one millisecond because it's not the server. Uh, wait, what? The profiler has run our samples. Ooh, this frame. Why are we running our samples? I don't know why, but we had we had some problem there. But we're only running one as soon as we host, though that it jumps up quite a bit, and as soon as we had some of these things that does jump up a quite a significant amount. Um, now there's a bunch of things uh, we are going to be sync, which is why the the milliseconds, by the way, jumped up. That's why it jumped up so much is because it was vsyncing things. But it's actually not a big impact, as you can see. So lighting doesn't seem as big an impact as I thought, but it's still a big impact compared to like my previous project ran on that mount and it didn't have anything like lighting, but this is just lighting and some server stuff and it's already reached that cap. I'll move that mark where we want to quote. Anyway, you got to about 15 things, so I've got about a decent amount to, to stretch out in my game. So I have um the by the way the resources I used were just this basically and a bit of Google because I've never used this stuff before. Um just want to point that out. So now I'm gonna go over the scripts and explain how it works. I've written this script basically a hundred percent by myself with the only help from the um Unity reference pages who gave me the whole um uh basically the spawn box thing. They basically gave me a lot of that. Right, but I wrote the rest of myself over probably two hours. So it's quite a long thing to write this, but this was my first time ever doing any networking in Unity. Not any networking at all. I've done networking in Java and stuff. So I understand how the whole packet system works, but this doesn't use that packet system, so it's a bit uh. Yeah, so we have a cube prefab. This is just what we're gonna this is our cube. We have our network view. Now this is a bit hard to explain, but essentially each player has one of these. This is the best way I can explain. Each player or each client, each um, instance of the um, game has one of these. And it's just basically your connection to the network and the, the application itself kind of thing. This is the IP address. This is essentially going to just be your current IP address. Now, one problem with this system is obviously it works 100% fine if you're hosting. But if you're joining, then you have to enter your own, obviously. Or enter the host's one, not your own. Um, I think it's this game's got a lot of potential with this stuff, and um, the fact is that it works. Um, if we're moving stuff, it's very simple. We just send it to the server that we moved. Also, um, one big thing is that from now on, uh, in all my abilities, we're going to have to actually send a command to the server saying, hey, can you please spawn this ability at this point? with all this and you know make the ability do all the other junk um because otherwise it's just not you know the server really has to do that stuff because if we do it that way that means we're just telling the server stuff and then the server can do checks you know are you actually frying oops sorry oh hiccups um but so we can send the same message to you like did you have do you actually have a cooldown for this ability you know is it have you just used it and stuff like that checking that the um Validity or whatever, the validity is fine. So the server can say, "Hey, your cooldown is back." 
you know, don't cheat on me. Um, and view, that's just very simple. Very, very simple. I I know what MV is now. <laughs> I, I, I totally forgot it's this project. It's, uh, where did I put it? Main command? Yeah, it's MV is your network view, um, which is essentially this object's connection to the network. So each object really should have a network view that is going to be shared. So when an object has a network view, that means that object is going to be shared across every client. Um, the stuff that isn't shared would be maybe stuff like client side. I can't think of any client side in a MOBA, but um, well, let's say you're shooting and maybe uh, a client side thing would be bullet holes. You don't want bullet holes. Um, well, I mean, you may want bullet holes um, server side, but you could also do it just client side, and that could work too. Um, that's totally up to the server, obviously. But if you do it client side, it means it's not so much traffic, because it means every time you shoot, you're not having to do bullet holes across every client in areas that may not even be rendered. But you're only doing a bit so for you. But obviously, it makes it seem a little maybe a little unrealistic on other people. But that's fine. This stuff's pretty cool. Okay. Um, the reflection probe, I, I'm a bit upset that some of this isn't working fully. I just kind of want it to look really cool. I don't, I, I don't know. Can we get like, I just want to kind of like muck around with this object. An absolute bunch. I don't know. We could just go, I don't know, shadow distance. Regardless, then we'll go up here. Um, and we're not gonna, we are gonna make it custom. Actually, we're just gonna make it baked, just and that will um, lower it down. Because normally, what you'd do is you'd have a real time via scripting, and that means that your scripting would update it and go, hey, do this, do this, do this, and then the scripting would update all this. It just makes it easier this way, I guess. We're gonna load down the intensity just so we can get, kind of get much more of a cube. We got us. Um, let's just go for the scripts. This is our launch server. This launches the server. This sets up incoming password. Now, the big thing about this incoming password is this is determined the, basically a password for the network. Now, one thing you will notice is that I didn't have a password it's because I set my password just as text, like here when when you connect. I just literally just set it here, but you could ask for a password. You could go, can you actually give me a password? That's amazingly important if you are doing something like a, a private server. Otherwise, it's not very important. Using that, um, I don't actually think this is useful in my, in my game. I think it's much more useful in uh, uh, FPSs, but it came with the little thing they had, and I don't really understand half this junk, so I'm just going to include it. So, initialize server. This is the bit that actually launches the server. It launches how many connections you have, 32. Obviously a bit much for MOBA, but that's fine. Um, 2,000, 25,000, I can't speak. Uh, listen ports, which is essentially the port that we connect to. Now, what you may not understand is that we can initialize multiple servers on one IP address. So, we can initialize thousands of ports. So if you wanted a single server, a master server, and that master server um, would then branch off into mini servers, you could do that. You would just have the master server or maybe listen port zero. Listen port one would be this. Listen port two would be this. Listen port three would be this. You could also just have this as a password too, kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe that seems a bit weird. Um, peer chat. What this says is this says whether or not your server or whether or not your client. This is kind of as useful just to detect for bugs, but it's not really useful anymore, so we are going to remove it. And it was mainly useful when I was having bugs in the original version. So this just has a little test environment thing at the bottom right of the screen. It, oh, it doesn't render? Wow, okay, that's interesting. I thought it rendered, but obviously, is there any way for me to make it render? No, it isn't. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, so if, so here, this is the button that says spawn a box and then we check if your server if we're at your server We just actually just make you run the spawn setup 
otherwise we make you send a command to the server to make a spawn setup. Now what's really big about this is this is actually something called a peer-to-peer -peer server system. And what a peer-to-peer -peer server system is essentially, um, well it's peer, so there's no dedicated service in this. I run a server, and then you join to me, and I'm still playing the game. But the only difference is I have control. I con My game controls when things are spawned and stuff. So when I spawn monsters, I make you spawn monsters, meaning you're in sync with me. Now, what does this mean? This means if I'm lagging, you're all lagging. But it also adds some other things, such as um, it means that there's a, if I'm 100% safe, if we can confirm that I'm 100% true, then everyone else is true. Whereas dedicated servers, sometimes they can be a bit off whack if something happens. So that is one thing. But regardless, if we check if server, then we run the spawn setup. Otherwise, we will... Um, uh, so the difference about this is this is not actually spawning the box. This is basically telling the server to spawn the box. Now this may make very little sense, but it makes a lot more sense when you're dealing with other stuff. So if I'm dealing with ability, there's two ways I can do it. I could make an ability spawn on all clients, but what you've just done since then is that I'm a client. I, I don't own the server. I'm not the server. And I've just had the power of the server. I've just made everyone spawn something. I can make everyone just die like that. You're giving me too much power. But what you're doing is you're asking the server to do stuff. So if you ask the server, go set this guy's health to zero, the server's going to go, that's not a command I can do. You know, I only have that control. And I don't set that thing. When you hit someone, what actually happens is I hit that person. And you may go, wait, well, what do you mean? So since the server's always in command, if when you find something, the server spawns that object. That object flies through the space. If that object hits someone, it will take damage and send, a server back to the server and send a message back to the server. But what's happening is that message back to the server. The server goes, I received a message from this random person, you know, from one of the uh, people saying, you hit someone, but my object didn't. So that means you're out of whack, meaning that I'm going to ask for a uh, sync check, meaning uh, lag for maybe a second and then I make sure your minion places are right con comparison to mine everything's right basically reset you and then I'm going to um, just ignore your command maybe you're lagging a bit and then mine hits and then okay mine hit and then do it and then I just kind of reset you so that's the big that's how kind of lag works if you are a client you just say hey server spawn a box and the box server will go okay and spawn a box Obviously, there's no checking this, but there's definitely um, ability to check whether or not you want it or not. But it's just kind of that simple setting up, and then you can kind of expand so later on to explore a lot more stuff. So stuff could be like how many people are there and stuff like that, instead of the client, because the client can influence that, but the server is a lot more secure. So if you're the host, you can launch the server. And I know a lot of people go, oh, well, but... The thing about this is that the host could muck up the server. Yes, but the host is the host, meaning if he wants to muck up the server, he can. He controls the server. That's the point of the host. So he has the ability to muck up the server. And that's good what's good about um, dedicated servers. I don't, obviously, they're making dedicated servers, but it's kind of easy. You just need to make it to script. And it's essentially this. It's actually, there's no difference between it. You just got to make sure he doesn't have a, his own play ID. So it's kind of just a bit different. So if if... You click upon host, then it hosts the server. It launches the server. Um, obviously, it doesn't launch a unique server. It just launches the server on your IP address. Actually, no, it doesn't. Does it? Does it initialize server launch one? In? Yeah, it must launch it on your IP address. Duh. So you. Oh, okay, just ignore what I just said. I oh my gosh I feel I'm it's just late at night and I, in my head I was like oh you could launch it for someone else's IP just just I'm so stupid. <laughs> if you're connecting, then you connect to the IP address that you've said to this port, right? And the password's this. If you're then a client, so that's you've successfully joined, then you say you've joined, but that's not needed. And then this is just simply, that's that text field. That's just the text field kind of uh, thing. Okay. Application quit. This just says when you close the application, you disconnect from the network. 
Um, spawn box setup, very simple. We get a ID, which is a, it's a very difficult thing because it's not what it actually means. I'm trying to get like an actual definition for you guys. Say, oh, well, this actually means this. And the most I could get was, like, I'll get it out for you. Here we go. QE, QE for the next available network view ID number and allocate it. So, just, uh, it's just a bit weird. The thing is that, I mean, well, I can definitely show you, I guess. If, so if I start up here, host spawn allocate ID is equal to 1. But the thing is that this is 0 and this is 1. Spawn another one, you'll see this is 2. So that's kind of what it means, I think, is that um, essentially what happens is um, this is 0, because this is network view 0. This is 1. Alright. And this is 2. I don't know. It's a bunch of shenanigans. Um, gosh, we don't need really need this anymore. I mean, if you could explain that, that would be great if you actually know this stuff. Um, I, I personally have literally just learned it this afternoon, so I'm a bit rusty, but I know it definitely from other things to understand how these systems work, and I've definitely mucked around for a little bit more than I would suspect normally people really would. Um, obviously, the next video is going to be a bit more informative, a bit more, um, I kind of understand this kind of thing. Oh, we're going really well on time. And this is the big stuff. Now, what does RPC mean? We've used it twice. I haven't explained what it means. I don't actually know what it stands for, but I know what it means. So, actually, I can maybe just see if we can look for what it stands for. Uh, RPC. Um, it doesn't say what it stands for. Um, reading. I don't know. What you get asked. RPC essentially is sending a message. You can send a message to a variety of things. You can send a message to clients, you can send a message to the server, you can send a message to a specific player. So if, for example, I threw my fireball, server go, and then you would say, hey, server, RPC, spawn fireball. Okay, spawn fireball. Do Or you'd sp like spawn object, fireball. All right? so you'd spawn a fireball. And then it would fly through there, let's say hit someone, and then the server would go, oh. and then the uh, fireball would go, server, I've hit someone. And then the fireball, would, and then the server would go, okay. And you were, and you are my copy of the fireball. Everyone else's copy is just for act. There's no use for them, really. So when the server creates his copy, he specifically states, okay, you're special, and gives the server a special name. And then when it comes back, it or I don't know what he does, but he does something to this thing so that when it comes back, you can tell who, which is which. And then it comes back and goes, hey, I was hit someone. Oh, and so it goes, good. That's amazing. You've just hit one some, right? So, and then it goes, hey, what's your name? Okay, your name is this, or your ID is this, regardless. So that means you're actually my copy, meaning you must have hit that person. Because if they lagged out, well, it's bad luck for them, because they didn't send the message to me that they've moved, so they're, they're wherever. So that means you've hit them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the message. So then the server sends a message to that specific player and goes, Hey, you've been here, and you've taken this much damage. And then the player goes, Oh, okay. Uh, let me do my stuff, you know, let me, uh, okay, I've got a buff that says I take 10% of this damage, okay, do, 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 do. and then it sends back, and so it goes, okay, yeah, you've got that buff, yeah, you can do that, yep, you do, yep, 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 and it checks all that stuff, so it go, okay, server, do I have this buff, yes, you do, do I have this buff, yes, you do, do I, yeah, it doesn't go for every buff, by the way, it just goes, kind of, it'll just, um, I mean, there isn't that many buffs, but it'll just go for the class, yeah. And we'll just double check the buffs it thinks it has. And then host is very simple. I've already gone through that. I've gone through the other stuff. Spawn box is very simple. Or buffered. Um, you need buffered because I found out that if you don't have buffered, then if you make a player join you later on, for example, it's a host line, create a bunch of objects, and then a player goes, okay, I've just disconnected. I need rejoin and gain all my data back. The server goes, I don't have to store any of that data because you don't buffer it. 
And then essentially I just whenever you spawn a box I require a view ID. Um because essentially um I very simply Well, I changed my own end view? That doesn't seem right. And that could I don't know if that's that's a problem. Because I changed my own network view. Oh no, I changed this end view. That's very close to this end view. Sorry. So um when I spawn a box I ask for an ID. And essentially this is gonna be the ID um allocated to that box. It's like your box three. Your box five. And also the location to spawn at. And then we go transform, and this is just kind of the position where it's meant to be. And then we go, hey, through the position where it's meant to be, this position is actually now uh, filled up with a cube who's located at this location with this rotation as transform, as transform. <laughs> and I was like, oh, why double transform? Um, it's kind of turning uh, the transform, it's a bit confusing, but it does this as transform and then change the whole thing into a transform. Okay, so and then we create another network view, and then we get that network view, and then we say, hey, the clone, your network view, ID is equal to the ID we had. Very, very simple. A single script. Done. Now, you may want to know how I did light. It's very, very simple. Way too simple. I just got a reflection probe and I just put that there. But really, you won't actually have to also have a light. Essentially, what you want to do is we want to kind of see how this is the thing you just kind of want to do this color is going to be kind of like a bluish just for effect. Raise the intensity. Because of that, then that means we do actually need to turn around the um this. We have to turn to spot and then we should be able to turn it. And I uh, lights don't seem to be working like I want them to. Side. Oh well, uh, maybe do like rendering. Oh well, I guess we could do real time. The intensity a bit much. You get like a hundred. That's ridiculous. Like a two is quite nice because then you can get the real reflection off. But you really, I think, want just one, and then you want the reflection probe on the platform.
Um, okay. Every frame. That seems a little bit much. I can't even tell that's the thing. There's like no difference. Wow. This effect is totally wiped out the cube. Ah, oh, that looks interesting, I don't know. Um, I just kind of want to bring it up like uh, to like f three, five, ten. Like that, I don't know. We can make the sun move around. Yeah, okay, I'm going way to do this. Way too much. Um. Yeah, way too much. Okay. So, thanks guys for watching, um, I'm so, uh, sorry this video was kind of a bit weird, it was a bit off and stuff like that, I haven't been feeling particularly well, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't too bad, um, but it did definitely feel a bit off, I know it wasn't as informative as I normally do, and I know it's a bit, like, I don't actually know what to do kind of thing, but I did know what to do, I read through the scripts a lot and understood how it worked, um, and I will definitely be going and doing a bit more research and fixing up all the scripts and making sure they work perfectly. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you guys have a nice day. See ya.